Hi everyone, welcome to Cup Idiom Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and today we'll be talking about sail theory, how sails work, and how a boat sails. For free downloads of the diagrams used in this video, as well as notes and checklists, please visit our website at www.carpidiumsailing.com. And now, let's get started. When I learned to sail as a kid, I was told that you can't sail straight into the wind if the sail was luffing to harden the main sheet, and when in doubt, to let it out. This was all I needed to have a lot of fun with a dinghy on a lake, but once I got into keelboats, I needed to know more. One of the first things that took me a bit of time to understand is that a sailboat sails in two completely different ways. In pull mode, when the wind is coming from ahead, and in push mode, when the wind is coming from astern. Once I figured that out, things started to make a lot more sense. In pull mode, the sails act like wings, generating lift, and that is going to be the focus of this video. In push mode, the sails simply catch wind and push the boat along. Let's revisit the sailing circle. Close hauled and close reach are pull mode, and I will expand on this theory in a little bit. So is a beam reach, but as soon as the wind drops behind this line, we're into push mode. This includes broad reaching and running. Viking ships and Roman galleys could only sail in push mode. Square riggers were pretty much the same. They might be able to sail a bit closer to the wind, but nothing like a fore and aft rig, which most historians believe evolved with the latine sail of the Middle East. Literally billions of dollars have been spent on modern sail technology, most of it to sail upwind as efficiently as possible. So let's look at how a sail acts like a wing. Simply put, from Bernoulli's principle, when a fluid follows a curved path, there is a pressure gradient perpendicular to the flow direction, with higher pressure on the inside of the curve and lower pressure on the outside. This is all well and good, but how does this make a sailboat move upwind? Essentially, since the lift force tries to pull the boat sideways, and it can't go sideways due to the lateral resistance of the keel, this translates into forward movement. For the sail to generate lift, the airflow has to be smooth and non-turbulent on both sides, as you see here. If the angle of attack is too head-on, such as when we're in irons, the sail will luff with turbulent air on both sides. We need to either harden the sheet or bear away from the wind. If the angle of attack is too narrow and close to being in irons but the sail isn't luffing yet, we call that pinching. We have lost lift and therefore drive. The opposite to this is if your sail is over trimmed and the angle of attack is too broad. In this case, there is much turbulence behind the sail, and once again, we have lost smooth airflow and lift. In this example, as the wind shifts, the angle of attack can be changed by either turning the whole boat, as we see here, in which case we alter course something called a lift, or we can remain on our course and ease the sails out and start reaching. The specific sailing situation you find yourself in will dictate which action to choose. Telltales are little lengths of ribbon or yarn sewn into the luff of a headsail and the leech of a mainsail. They are visual indicators of the flow of air past the sail. Ideally, they should be flying straight back. In this example, the red telltales are on the windward side of the sail, and they are breaking. We need to either sheet the sail in, or bear away. Here, the blue telltales on the leeward side of the sail are breaking. We need to either ease the sail out, or head up. In this clip, we are sailing close hauled, 
and I will be turning the boat to change the angle of attack of the wind. Here the telltales are flying straight back as they should, which means I'm generating lift and the sail is driving the boat. As I head up too close to the wind and start to pinch, you will see the windward telltales breaking and then you will see the sail start to luff. In this case, since I'm close hauled, which is as close to the wind as I can sail, my only option is to bear away. If I bear away too far, the lured telltales break and now the sail is stalled and losing lift. My choices here are to head up or ease the sheets, letting the sail out, and will be dictated by where I'm trying to go. As I head back up closer to the wind, the telltales once again begin to fly straight back. The mainsail is trimmed to work with the headsail and the telltales on the leech of the main should also fly straight back. I want to quickly review beating. This is sailing as close to the wind as you can, close hauled and coming about in succession to gain an upwind destination. On a beat, the wind is rarely, if ever, steady in terms of its direction. As the wind shifts back and forth, we have to react to keep the boat moving at its best pace. These shifts are called lifts and headers. A lift occurs when the wind shifts and allows you to point closer to your destination, in this case the islands. A header, on the other hand, shifts the wind onto the bow, threatening to put us in irons if we don't react. We initially bear away to keep the boat driving and then consider coming about. As I mentioned in my video on the points of sail, if we're not beating or running, we're reaching. When you reach, you will be in pull mode up until a beam reach. Once the wind shifts abaft the beam, you are now broad reaching and you are now in push mode. Telltales do not work when broad reaching or running and you simply place the sails at right angles to the wind to catch as much wind as possible. When running, the sails will be on opposite sides of the boat and you can run on either starboard or port tack, starboard being preferred. See you again soon for episode 14. I'll be talking about excessive healing and how this adversely affects sailing performance.